Hi. Uh, my name is Trumpet M. Cool. Uh, so today uh, we're going to do something a little differently. So normally I go over passages, at least this year, I've been going through passages out of taken out of context and um, really diving into scripture and seeing what it says. But today uh, I want to go, since this is Easter Sunday that I'm uh, recording this on Saturday, I kind of wanted to, um, this was kind of placed on my heart. Instead of going, uh, usually the resurrection's not taken out of context, but um, I kind of wanted to give more context to the Easter story. Uh, yeah, I stumbled That's upon this from uh, Mike Winger going over this, and he's got a, a further in-depth analysis of this so definitely go check this out um but i wanted to to i wanted to inspire you to read isaiah more and i'm going to tell you more why um and give a little bit more context to what it says in isaiah um Just realized it was a bit loud. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to hop in. It's going to start in Isaiah 52, at the end of Isaiah 52. Uh, so I'm just going to sort of, sort of read into this and then uh, walk, kind of walk through what st sticks out to me and hopefully uh, inspire you to, to d dive deeper into this. So this is Isaiah 52, uh, verse this kind of starts the uh, the prophecy of the resurrection. Uh, so, Lucis, how's it going? Hi, you're just in time. Okay, so we're in Isaiah 52. Um, it says, "Behold, my servant shall deal prudently." So here we have we're talking about Jesus here. This is God. Uh, this is so in Isaiah it's talking about prophecy um, so behold my servant shall deal prudently um, he shall be exalted and extolled what is this be lifted up and be very high my servant shall be exalted and lifted up um, so sounds like Jesus um, just as many were astonished at you so his visage appearance was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. Um, so here, marred more than man, than any, any man. So this is him being uh, uh, whipped and like right before the cross. Um, so shall he sprinkle many nations. Um, now, this sprinkle many nations is kind of a reference. If you, um, I think maybe one day, uh, one Easter, we'll go back and look at um, what it says in Leviticus. But, and this is kind of alluding to the sin offering. Um, and then we'll see more in Isaiah 53. But, the sin offering um, was a way to obtain forgiveness um, for any sin that was done in ignorance, and it was about a it was over a group of people. Um, so um, the fact that this was uh, yeah, and so like um, this was something that was brought the sacrifice for sin was burned outside of the camp. Um, so it's kind of like Jesus. Um, so he shall sprinkle many nations. Um, so usually it was just for one group of people, but this is for many nations. It's, it's, it's really big if you think about it. Um, so it's really talking about um, how 
not only will it be for the Israelites, but it also be for the Gentiles. Um, so here we have in Isaiah talking about how he, he will um, be the forgiveness for everyone, for all people. Kings shall shut their mouths at him for what uh, had not been told them they shall see. And what they had not heard, they shall consider. Um, yeah. So this is kind of a hard pill to swallow. And Isaiah is like, who has believed our report? Um, this is kind of like, I know this is really hard to, but who has heard this? Um, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no uh, he has no form, no stately form or comeliness nor splendor. And when when we see him, there is no beauty uh, appearance that we should desire him. Um, this is kind of really like, you know, it, it's, it wasn't Jesus that we, we that people portray him to be. Um, this uh, beautiful man with long flowing hair, uh, uh, blue-eyed, um, well-dressed, <laughs> you know, um, he was he he wasn't here for looks. Um, he is he is despised and rejected by men. Um, a man of sorrows, uh, pains, and acquainted with grief. Um, so, at the time, there were many, the, the religious leaders of the time, uh, really despised and rejected Jesus. Um, um, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him so um, yeah it's just a uh, really a clear picture of how he was pictured um, in his day surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows so yeah see this is a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Um, like, Jesus went to the cross to take on all of our sin. Um, like, if you would imagine um, having all of the sin that we do today, <laughs> um, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted so he went on the cross um, to take on the punishment that we deserved um, but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed so through what he did we have um, eternal life we are able to be right before God um, all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all so just another a beautiful picture of how God is um, how Jesus really took on our sins uh, because we have turned away from him. Jesus suffered at the cross for six hours for my sin. Yeah. Yeah. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And a sheep, and as a sheep before its shearers, it is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Yeah, 10 is where we're getting to. So this is all building up to 10. So stay, stay with me. We're getting to 10. Um, he 
He was not taken from prison. Oh, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. Um, so this, this cut off from the land of the living, um, like this was, this is like clear indication of death. Um, so Jesus died. Um, so he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. So, um, this is another, like, um, this is kind of like the picture that he took on our sin. Um, like, this is, <laughs> It's it's so hard to like fully um, speak more about this because it's so eloquently put how Jesus put on all of our our transgressions at the cross, and they made his grave with the wicked. So um, the the ones who wanted him dead um, took him to the to took him to his death. Um, they were th the wicked. Uh, but with the rich at his death so this was this is in reference to um joseph of arimathea had was a um was a man who wanted uh, a wealthy man who wanted to um, put jesus in his tomb before he died um, his tomb was already made and um so yeah, it just has another picture of here, another prophecy fulfilled. Um, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in, in his mouth. And this was another um, sign that Jesus had no sin. Um, there was no, he did not commit sin, but he took on sin for us. Um, then yet it, here we go, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Um, now, you may think, oh, does that mean that God liked that that Jesus uh, died? Um, no, it wasn't. It's not that. It's that the act um, of Jesus going to the cross um, for the sins of the people, uh, for us, is um, he was pleased with that. John 3.16. Oh, Saint. Saint, thank you so much for the follow. I need to fix the text. <laughs> but I can, you I can barely read it. But I saw Saint. Thank you so much for the follow, Saint. How are you doing today? Um, but yeah, it's... Um, just like John 3.16. Um, uh, thank you so much for the lur lurk, man. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Um, okay, so um, we're in verse 10. Uh, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Um, he has put him to grief. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's just like John 3.16 where it's God is pleased with this action because um through his death we have eternal life so through this sacrifice we are able to have um right standing and righteousness before god yeah i'm so glad to i'm, I'm very glad i got to see you today man but um when when you make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So let me just break this down, because this is really, really awesome. Um, so he has put him to grief. So in this statement, we have death. So the Lord died. Um, when you make his soul an offering for sin, so when he was made as a, a sin offering. So here we have Leviticus coming back in. 
Um, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. So that's the resurrection right there that's prophesied. Um, where he he has life now. Um, so it's the resurrection is right there. <laughs> I actually need some sleep now. I gotta play football tomorrow morning. Okay, man Bond, thank you so much for coming. I hope you have a great day. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. And uh, I hope to see you around. Bye. Um, and then the rest of this is just so good. Um, it really follows up what happens next. So if you want to, if you want to know what happens next, here it is. He shall see the labor of his soul. This is God. He shall see the labor of Jesus' soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Here's another uh, rehashing, bringing up that he is going to justify everyone who believes in Jesus, for he shall bear their sins. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he will, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. <sighs> it's so good. Um, so, so even, so, after Jesus is death and resurrection he now has borne the sin of us born our sin and now makes intercession for the sinners so now that he has been resurrected he we have communication with the with our father in heaven through jesus so he makes intercession for us so it's just this this is an Isaiah. This is hundreds of years before Jesus even came onto the uh earth. And this was already prophesied. So I don't know about you, but it makes me want to read Isaiah more. And so I'm like, okay, so this is this is the resurrection. This is it. What what does it say beforehand? <laughs> so I'm like, what what does it say? What does it say before? Is it is it here? Yeah, it is. God redeems Jerusalem. Awake, awake! Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourselves from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. <laughs> sit down! <laughs> Lose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord, my people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there. So here we're kind of recapping. Um, my, my people went down at first into Egypt. Then the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Now, therefore... What have I here, says the Lord, that my people are taken away for nothing? So he's kind of explaining what he meant up here. That my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them make them wail, says the Lord. And my name is blasphemed continually every day. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. And this is kind of like when God speaks, he will say, I am. And Jesus did this. Jesus declared that he was God. Um, and this is so beautiful. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. 
Your watchmen shall lift up their voices, with their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. So that's the uh, kingdom of heaven. Um, break forth on, into joy, sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. <sighs> depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord, for you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Oh, this is so good. Um, and like, so this is kind of pointing to us being in relationship with God. And I just, um, and who Jesus is. I just kind of want to point back. Uh, I just went through a series uh, with in the Hopeful Disasters uh, in our Bible studies on Friday through Hebrews. And we just got to the end of Hebrews. It's just perfect timing. We're on the uh, Hebrews 13. So I kind of wanted to point this out. Since we're here talking about Easter. Um, this section really sums up what the cross is what it was to the old testament people what it is to the new testament people we have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat but the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin sin offering again are burned outside the camp Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the, the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. So here we are coming into New Testament. For here we have no continuing city. There's no city here on earth like Israel had. But we seek the one to come, heaven. Therefore by him, by Jesus, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So I just want to remind you that... Uh, there is more context to what happened at Easter. Um, Old Testament was pointing to what was going to happen on the cross with the sacrifices they, they made outside of the camp. New Testament today, we're pointing back, we're praising what Jesus did on the cross. Therefore, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks doing good, sharing the gospel, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So they did their sacrifices to point to Jesus. Jesus did the ultimate sacrifice, and our sacrifice today is to, to praise him for what he's done. So I just want to remind you of all the context that's happening this weekend. Um, and how great our God is that he would come down here bear the sin of of the world so that we could have right standing before him yeah uh it's just so good if you when you when you really think about it what and it really wants me it really like helps me to like want to read Isaiah more because Isaiah 40 is talks about the peace um, or the comfort of God 
like it was talking about in the end of 53. Jesus was the perfect lamb of God. Yeah. And I think next year I may go into Leviticus, what the lamb really was. Um, so we can have a deep, even deeper understanding of Easter. But here is a prophecy that was clearly about um, clearly about the resurrection. And uh, I just wanted to underline it for y'all so that you know that it's not just a story. This was also prophesied. <laughs>